technological change and the social change that comes with this, with it, is happening so quickly and is recurring so often that I think it's important that we all have a way that we can reimagine ourselves, who we are and what we want to be. It's really a way of coming up with a yardstick to see how we can think about the future when we can't really see the future. And that's what I call my five-year rule. So we are in Rhino, a very reimagined neighborhood. And it's become this wonderful community of entrepreneurs and creatives and entrepreneurs. And in turn, it's almost become a such a dense area of people working together that it's become almost an idea of how the economy will work in the future. It's, it's a campus of thought. In my case, um, it is something that I've been in, I've been in this neighborhood for 13 years, and it's really changed dramatically. For people that have only experienced this neighborhood for the last two or three years, it may kind of appear to be something that is kind of an immediate reimagining, a one-time event reimagining, but I argue that it's really an ongoing, never begin, begun, never ended, reoccurring, reimagining, just like the rest of us in our lives. As an example, my daughter, who's here tonight, she's a freshman in high school, and she is confronted with a life that is going to include probably six different careers, not jobs, but careers. This huge amount of change in her life is going to make it that reimagining really isn't this process we kind of see it as, but almost a personality trait. It's going to be so much a part of her that it's going to be an ongoing thing. So I'm both a creative and an entrepreneur. I've been in the film business for 30 years. My father for 30 years before me in Denver. That's how long we've all been here. Um, I started my own company 23 years ago. And in that time, I've really realized this pattern of a cycle of change that occurs basically every five years. And so that is kind of the way that I look at how I try to plan my future. So the first thing about the five-year rule is that, strangely enough, it happens every five years. It just is like clockwork. Um, it, just, it just keeps happening. The first moment in this great cycle is your origin story. And that is the time when you, as a, in your career or as an entrepreneur, you see this gap that you see that you can do better than anybody else. You know you can do better than anybody else. And that passion, that focus, makes you start that project, that career, that business. In reality, what we sometimes forget is that other people are doing the same thing. They see the same gap, or probably a different gap, and that's just changing the entire environment around you, and then you have to start changing who you are. So my origin story, 23 years old, so it's, I want to tell it because it kind of tells you how far and how many times I've had to change. This is the origin story of my company. It is that I'm going to create one place where film producers, video producers, and ad agency people can come in and work in picture and sound digitally. Well, that's what we do every day. Right now, everybody the behind here shooting us is doing that same thing. But in my day, that was a pretty revolutionary idea. So you can imagine how many times I've had to change. The second thing about the five-year rule is that it's not a five-year corporate plan. That assumes that you kind of can predict the future. You know the future five years out. I think that entrepreneurial pioneers that we are in this neighborhood really don't have that ability to see that clearly what the future is going to be. If we think we know what's happening, then it may not be happening in, in reality. So again, for me, in my career, in my one generation, we've gone from having three TV networks to 500 networks and soon to be zero. So again, this great arc of change, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Get rid of those TV networks. Um, that great arc of change is just an example of do I, do I go pursue this or do I go and pursue that? So in my career, how I shoot, how I edit, who 
buys my services, how my services are delivered, how you see it has been changed over and over again. And that's a difficult thing to keep up because if you're already in the middle of it, you can't just completely turn away everything you've ever done or how you get paid. You have to somehow make it be a small incremental change. But eventually what happens is you've got to turn 90 degrees. Something so major happens that you have to decide, I've got to go for it. So my favorite example right now is HBO. In February 2010, they announced this idea that you could stream video on your, on your brand new iPad that was five years ago. And you still had to pay for it through your, your uh, satellite provider or your video uh, cable company but they made this dramatic change. Now, for us probably that are technologically savvy now, we kind of have already forgotten how strange and revolutionary this was. Now what's happened, almost five years to the day, last month, HBO announces, ah, screw it, we're just gonna go compete against our own clients, our own partners, and we're gonna say you can buy what you need to buy directly th through us. We've crossed that line, we've competed against our own clients. And it's not that they couldn't see that this was going to happen. They've seen Netflix coming up at their, their backside. But they had to make a decision when it was better to make this big change. So what that means for us as entrepreneurs, smaller entrepreneurs, is I think we have to have that attitude of going all in. We've got to bet the farm. We've got to throw all the chips to the middle. And of course, that is a great gambling metaphor. But it's not so much that. It's really just more a question of how you ask yourself, do I have the passion, the focus, the financial ability to go at this again and go all in? My best example of that is 2001. Uh, I had lost my welcome where I was leasing, and I had the desire to grow. I had the ability to grow. Found a bank, found a building in Rhino that I'm still in. And then 9-11 happened, and I had to make that decision. Do I believe in myself? Do I have enough confidence to go for it, or do I close? It was as simple as that. So here I am 13 years later. Yeah! yeah. yeah. So it's a matter of having an attitude that you can do it. It's going back to that first feeling that you had, in my case, when I was 26. I'm going to go do this. And I think if you don't have that, I'm not sure you're going to succeed in the long run. In the short run, yeah, sure, why not? But in the long run, I think you have to go for it. So what does that mean for us? I think that the cycle is going to continue. It's going to speed up. And it's going to mean that you're going to have to change and anticipate a future that it's hard to see. And I'm not saying that you need to come up with a five-year rule or a three-year rule or any line in the sand to make you make these decisions. It's just when you see this big moment come, you gotta give it its due and you gotta think through and decide, do I wanna go in, do it all again or not? I'm 23 years in, I'm coming up to a five-year multiple and I know that these are the same questions I need to ask. If I can't do this on my own, can I continue, or do I need to pass the baton to somebody else within my company? What do I need to do? These are the questions you need to ask. It's almost as if you have to decide, do I want to get off the carousel that I'm on, or do I want to rebuild the carousel? And ultimately, the way I feel is that we all have to come up with a way of reimagining ourselves and the future so that we're not just mindlessly swept along in its wake. Thank you very much. Thanks.